Weedy spirobolus grasses, such as giant Parramatta grass, cost the cattle industry millions of dollars in lost production, particularly along Australia's east coast. A new biocontrol has been identified to counter the problem. The fungus Nigrospora aryzae is a native to Australia and causes a type of crown rot, which turns diseased leaves orange. David Officer, a research agronomist from the New South Wales DPI, takes us through ways to identify and transplant infected grasses into areas where biocontrol is needed. There is an annual cycle over winter and early spring uh, prior to the spring break in rain. Um, it's very hard to see any disease in the paddock. Um, a week to ten days after that spring break of rain we suddenly see all these bright orange leaves starting to show up so the disease has been present but it's been dormant and so with the rain the plant uh, kicks into gear and starts to grow and it's in that new growth that you see the disease actually starting to show up in those orange leaves. The biocontrol agent occurs naturally, especially around the New South Wales north coast, and many farmers will already have it on their property. If you don't, look to your neighbours or ask your local weeds officer so you can introduce it to control weedy spirobolus grasses. After that spring break is the best time to move plants carrying the fungus into areas you want to attack. You want moisture there uh, because the moisture allows the, the transplanted plant to survive for long enough to keep on producing the disease symptoms and spread the spores. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we tend to do it from, from the spring break onwards. The size of the plant probably doesn't matter too much. Um, most of the time I tend to be digging up plants that are somewhere between 5 and 10 centimetres across of the base. Um, if you've got something that's any bigger than that, it's quite easy enough to use the mattock to divide it into a couple of plants and, and uh, to plant them separately. Um, re realistically, you're just trying to dig up enough uh, soil and roots to uh, enable the plant to survive once you relocate it. The other thing is, in terms of looking after the plants once you've actually dug them up, um, you're better off putting them in hessian type bags or bags that are going to breathe, uh, otherwise the plants will tend to sweat. Replant as soon as you can because wilted plants won't last as long or spread as many spores. You just open the soil up with a mattock, uh, create enough uh, of a hole to, base, to drop the plant in and then just use the soil that you've lifted up to push around the thing and then just stomp, stomp around the tussock so that you've got good uh, root soil contact. And um, if you're doing it at a time of the year when the soil is already moist, you don't have to worry about watering or anything, the plant will, will happily take it under those particular circumstances. Cattle are curious and could rip out the plants, so keep them away for at least a week. But they can help in terms of where to put the diseased plants. High traffic areas, uh, so cattle tracks, um, near cattle yards, um, in areas where obviously the Parramatta grass is already dense so they've got the opportunity for the, the natural spread within a, a local infestation or on high areas where it's got the opportunity to actually move downhill as a result of rainfall. It can take some time to work but a slow decline can also allow native grasses back in rather than new weeds. The thing we, we, we are noticing uh, with this particular fungus is that it likes uh, or shows up in new growth. Uh, and the two easiest ways to stimulate new growth in uh, these weedy sprobolus grasses is to either uh, put a match in and burn off the tops so you've got a whole heap of fresh regrowth or to slash uh, and uh, remove the tops that way. Both those methods will actually encourage the plant to uh, produce new seed heads and it's in those new tillers that the disease shows up.